In this video, I'm gonna show you how I practice trade and also when I'm testing out new indicators or slight changes to my system, I like to do the market replay mode. I mean, going back and looking through the charts is helpful too, but I also like to see how I would actually trade a system and just kind of see how I'd handle things from moment to moment. So I've got some market replay data loaded from like 10 days ago. So when I do the market replay practice, I'm only practicing during the same time frame that I want to be trading, which is the New York Open from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I always do the market replay in real-time mode. And of course, trading in simulation is a billion times easier and it's also easy to develop some really bad habits like just averaging into trades with hundreds of contracts or something like that and so i try to trade exactly how i would trade in my apex accounts and still even then i'm pretty much guaranteed i'll do a billion times better than i actually do during live trading but nonetheless it's a very helpful practice tool to get some more time in the markets where you have some real interaction with the charts, not just scrolling back and looking at static charts in the past. I've played around with so many different indicators in the many years I've been doing this, and I always have my base core system. I've spoke about it in some of my other videos, but I always have some kind of order flow, some kind of volume, some kind of support and resistance. And then I'm also checking out price action and volatility. The big five, I call them. Got that in every single one of my systems. So even though I'm kind of testing out a couple of new indicators just for fun, I always like to challenge myself and keep learning new things and see if I can improve on anything. And I also just like the challenge of trying to trade slightly different setups and see if I can make them profitable. Although, keeping it super simple and just trading one single trade strategy is actually incredibly beneficial, especially when you're first starting out. You know, constantly changing systems and constantly looking for the next best indicator is not a good thing. Like I did that for many years where I'd be using something and then it wouldn't work one day, so I'd switch to a an entirely different system and just went through that process over and over until I found like my base that I can really rely on. And now, you know, I like playing around with the indicators just for fun and it doesn't affect my trading because I always have my base set up. So I've got my base set up on the five minute chart, my standard set up on the 60 minute chart. Uh, this is the ES one minute. I've just got kind of floating around in this tiny little window. I can move it around wherever. I just want to keep an eye on uh, VWAP and the pivot points on the ES. I'm mainly trading the NASDAQ. That's what I have on these other three charts. On the one minute, I've got the cumulative delta histogram. I've got a wave volume signal indicator from Ninza. And I'm trying out the eye trend indicator from Ninza. And then I've got the superior Bollinger Band from Ninza, which a lot of their indicators are just glorified versions of what already comes with Ninja Trader for free, but I really like them because they're so dang customizable. Like I can have these candles change color when price breaks out of the Bollinger Bands, the upper and the lower. I can have it print markers. I can have it just print the candle outline and I can have something else in the middle filling it up. Just all kinds of different customizable options. Same with like the MACD version they have and the RSI, you can have it paint backgrounds, paint arrows. I use their MACD indicator a lot because I can paint the background to tell if the MACD is bullish or bearish. And I've got a whole entire video on their moving average indicator. And with their moving average crossover, you can you know, change the bar color, print markers, have different colored clouds and it's a really cool one. Nonetheless, I highly recommend coming up 
with something that you can use just with the basic indicators that are included with NinjaTrader. And if I was going to add just a couple of indicators that NinjaTrader does not come with on the free version, it would be some kind of order flow and then a VWAP, which I'm surprised they don't have a VWAP on NinjaTrader free edition. It's surprising. But they have a volume indicator for free. They've got the Bollinger Bands. They've got MACD. They've got all the moving averages. But yeah, adding a VWAP and some order flow to the basic Ninja Trader indicators, that would be a good place to start. But really, there's no magic indicator that's just going to make you a profitable trader overnight. And with any of these indicators that I'm testing out, if I'm playing around with them, I like to change every single aspect of every possible parameter that I can change just to see what it does and how it works and how it affects the charts. Really get to know the indicator inside and out so I know what it's doing and not just randomly relying on a signal that prints on the chart. For me these indicators are just helpful visual cues reminding me to pay attention of some kind of basic trading knowledge that I already have from looking at the charts for years and years and there's really just no substitute for that. So anyway, uh, I've got market replay loaded, got it set in real time, 1x, one, one uh, just about a minute before the market open on September 13th. I only have the market replay up for that one hour of the market open because that's the only time frame I trade when I'm doing live trading. But just looking at the general market overview, this is the 60 minute chart, definitely in a downtrend, had this big spiky candle, looks like there's some news at uh, 8.30 here and we bounced back up quick. I'd be looking for possible move back down. Market is open to 9.30. Got this current day point of control that will change throughout the day. I've got yesterday's point of control. Just kind of seeing what the market wants to do here. We are uh, making new highs here. So I was waiting for the close of this candle to see where the histogram ended up and the histogram ended up higher than this last up move so we might be headed up a little bit our cumulative delta is going up on the NQ and the ES good amount of delta coming in so far I still like it to the downside just because that news reaction in the morning was so bearish initially uh, coming up to the pivot point at 55 and yesterday's point of control is right at 55 too so double whammy right there I would love a bounce trade if it made it up that far we do have a lot of delta coming in on the ES in particular still think a bounce trade off of yesterday's point of control and the uh, pivot point a good idea. I don't trade with tight stops. Um, I've got a daily kind of loss limit in dollar amount that I don't like to go above where I'll just stop trading for the day. But per trade I like to give my trades a little bit of room if I think things are going in my favor. If I see them starting to wane, I'll move my stop up super close or I'll just get out and reverse if I realize I missed a call or misjudged a trading opportunity. I don't enter into every single trade with a 2 to 1 or a 3 to 1 risk reward ratio in mind. I don't I have never found that helpful for the kind of scalping that I do. So. I started out doing Forex and doing swing trading and definitely held trades for at least a couple hours, sometimes a few days. I started off doing my own thing in Forex at the very, very beginning and then a few months into it, I became a member of this room and was just following this other guy's trades and 
I luckily picked like a really profitable room, at least at the beginning. I was I had a live account with my own real money in it, and um, I was doing very very well. Just copying this guy's trades for like six months, and then uh, then he started to wane. He wasn't trading so good, and I started questioning his abilities and. I was getting out of trades and making more money than he was per month and I just kind of stopped following him and yeah it turns out he just tanked and uh, and just dropped his whole room and everything so I was pretty lucky to stop at that point honestly and around that time I realized I really didn't know what I was doing like even though I'd been learning from this guy and following his trades, I had really just been following him and counting on him to tell me when to buy and sell and I hadn't been paying attention or learning how to trade on my own. And at that point I I was really like on the computer like eight or ten hours a day just tweaking on the charts. Just It was just way too much screen time and I got another opportunity to have a job doing some outdoor work and things not on the computer so kind of put trading to the wayside for a little bit and focused on other careers for a while but was always checking out the charts at least part-time until I got back into futures and discovered futures and then that was just an entirely different journey because I was really trying to learn how to trade versus following someone else I realized I wanted to actually know what I was doing without someone else watching over my shoulder or telling me what to do so that was quite a long journey before I actually figured it out and became profitable on a regular basis and it's a very nice place to be it's a lot less stressful to trade when you really feel like you've got an edge you need you need to have an edge and you, you need to feel confident about your trading edge and know it inside out and again, and I think that just comes with tons of chart time and practice. I've done a lot of these market replay sessions. I thought I'd be doing more trading than talking, but I just feel like it's important to mention those things. So I'm looking at the close of this uh, five minute candle and just tons of volume coming in in the close right there. And yeah, wow. we popped up 30 points on the next candle. Cumulative delta is still pretty strong. We're in an uptrend on this eye trend indicator, up wave on the uh, volume wave indicator. Still above the center Bollinger line. Cumulative delta on the five minute still rocking to the upside. I kind of wonder how far this would get. I'm still uh, Still factoring in that news reaction to the downside. Not a whole lot of delta coming in on the NQ so far this morning. A little bit more on the ES, but plenty of nice volume to the upside. Still haven't made it above yesterday's point of control. This is pretty tempting to want to take another short first touch on a level or is the best. Second touch, iffy. <laughs> if you got some strong conviction and you think you got enough factors in your favor, second touches can be all right. Third touches, no way. If it's coming up once and twice, third time it comes up to a level, pretty good chance it'll break. But so far, it's holding up. And we got the pivot point right there too. There's not a whole lot of volume coming in on this five minute candle. I think it's got to be over 10k before it'll print. It's the level I have set for the volume candles indicator, which is just a souped up version of the volume up and down indicator that comes with Ninja Trader. But this one I like because it just prints the numbers right on the chart. I don't have to take up space with a histogram down below. We're at the top of the Bollinger Band here. Cumulative Delta is drifting off on that candle. 
even though we're the same high. Mm, I hesitated right at the center line of the Bollinger. Might get a bounce there. If it does close below the center Bollinger line, I might be interested in a short down towards yesterday's close. Had a pretty decent wick on this five minute candle. So I really wonder how far, how high it can really get. The in a downtrend had that big negative spike on the news this morning. I haven't even really been looking at my ES levels. Sometimes I have this ES chart up, sometimes I don't. It definitely comes in handy sometimes, like knowing when the ES is coming up to VWAP or yesterday's close or something like that or its pivot point. And then sometimes I feel like it's just too much and a distraction, so I got it in this little chart in the corner if I need to see it. Cumulative delta is definitely dropping off on the one minute. The volume's getting a little bit less and less. I'm still personally liking this to the downside more than the upside. So I just want to wait until I get a good reason to go in short. So we just got to close below the center Bollinger line. Uh, this eye trend indicator is still positive. Cumulative delta is still pretty much going up. Haven't had any major drop-offs, no major delta to the downside. No major volume to the downside yet. Still has not really broken much above yesterday's point of control. Have the upper Bollinger Band up here. If I could get a bigger candle close a little bit further away from the center Bollinger line, uh, I'd be interested in a short, maybe down to the lower Bollinger Band line. If we broke out above this high up here and the yesterday's point of control, maybe target the three day point of control or the three day view app. I'm just, uh, I'm freaked out about taking longs just because of the overall trend and the news reaction. And now this eye trend indicator is giving us a bearish signal. So yeah, this is how I trade market replay. I'm really imagining I'm trading live. Like I'm not just hitting buttons and taking every single signal. I'm really trying to think it all out and look ahead and see where I think the market's going and have as many factors line up in my favor as possible and trade like I'd really be trading. You know, another part of the reason I started this channel is just to help clarify and hone my own strategy and I thought trying to present it and talk about it might help give me some extra clarity and strength. So three seconds left, looks like we're getting a close. Whoops. I fat fingered that one. I went in heavier than I would. We got rejected off of yesterday's point of control. I've done an entire video on why you might want to pay attention to yesterday's point of control. Check that out. Got our cumulative delta dropping on the five minute and the one minute. Like I said, I'm just favoring shorts. Overall, we had some negative volume come in in our five minute, negative 12K. Looks like it came within a tick or two, taking me out. Honestly, if I was live trading, I'm sure I would have clicked out by now, so maybe I'll put my <laughs> take profit up a little bit, especially if I accidentally fat fingered it and added in extra contracts. So I try to keep myself as honest as possible when I'm trading these uh, market replay. It only benefits me in the long run. There's no benefit to just getting crazy and trading like hundreds of contracts. Just it's not a good habit. Unless you're going to trade hundreds of contracts for real, I mean, more power to you. Plus, this is just all my opinion. Things I've learned from my experiences. There's always exceptions to every rule. Do your own research.
get to know whatever indicator or system or strategy you're using inside and out. Practice it over and over and over and over and over. And even after all that, if you got your strategy down and you're super disciplined, there's still the emotions of live trading and the whole mental game that goes on when you're live trading. And I'm sure if you ask anyone that's been trading for any amount of time, they would agree that the whole mental aspect is like 90% of it. I mean, there's a ton of strategies that you could use to become profitable, but will you actually implement them every day? Do you like them? Do you feel comfortable with them? Do you know them inside and out? Do you truly feel that they give you some kind of edge? And have you done it in live trading like over and over and have that base built within your energetic core where you just fucking feel it every day and you don't have to question it or overanalyze anything. Just do it. Do it. Do it. That's a good place to be. So I feel like I've ranted maybe enough I'm trying to only put out stuff that I think would be beneficial. I don't know if watching me trade in market replay mode is necessarily beneficial for anyone or not. I'm just making making shit and seeing what happens, you know? Uh, we got a nice big bounce off of yesterday's close. Uh, it was also VWAP. Big old bounce. 30 point bounce back up to the Bollinger Center Band line. You know, I spent years making my own indicators and automated systems with strategy builder and this indicator called markers plus that lets you make your own kind of indicators and you can have your own markers print uh, this one is based on the hma and it's just calculating the slope of i think the 14 hma but I mean, there's just so many different things you can do with trading. It's a never-ending rabbit hole. Markers Plus is great. I'd recommend if you got some extra dough playing around with it. I'm not a, an affiliate with them or anything. The only thing I didn't like about Markers Plus is that A, I never used it because I don't trust a robot to trade for me. I don't like automation. I like to have complete manual control over all my trades. I don't like not thinking about something and let, letting the machine do it for me. I just am completely against that. I just, I tried it, even though I built a bunch of systems that were technically more profitable than I was sometimes, it just, I refused to put my trust in that. Can't do it, just didn't work for me. And also the markers plus, if I had a bunch of different parameters plugged into this thing, I noticed it would kind of slow down some of my charts and I didn't like that. So when price was getting super volatile last fall, it wasn't keeping up. So I just kind of stopped using it and just stuck with the Ninza indicators. They're the only ones that hold up through all the different market conditions and I can customize them enough to pretty much make anything that I want to see. So there's a little bonus rant for you. So yeah, this iTrend thing is kind of interesting. Had a nice down move. Yeah, if you were just relying on this, you'd be like, well, what the heck? This thing doesn't work. But for me, I noticed it's coming down to yesterday's close and view app. I would expect some kind of bounce there. Now that it's coming up to yesterday's point of control, I still see we're in a downtrend in this I trend. We've got negative cumulative delta coming in. Like I'd be looking for shorts off of this yesterday's point of control again, if anything. And now that we broke below, oops. Now that we broke below this center Bollinger band with, look at the size of this candle compared to these other two big old candle to the downside. I'm looking as uh, price is coming up to these highs. Cumulative delta is drying up, but it's still, we're still lower than the move over here near the same levels. We had delta skyrocketing up here. So anyways, it's taking its uh, sweet time. It's taking too much time. 
I really like to be in and out if I don't see the momentum going in my direction pretty much immediately then I'm focused on my exit strategy and it came down to the lower Bollinger Band but that's fine I don't know would I take three or four trades 100% winners of course it's market replay and everyone trades better in market replay but building confidence in my system and what I see I think it's a helpful process to be engaged in on a regular basis just looking at this price action we had a nice close below the current point of control close below VWAP cumulative delta on the one minutes coming in hot all this uh, negative delta on the five minute that would have been a great trade down to yesterday's low 14 points or so I'm also pretty happy with my overall analysis of the day noticing the downtrend and then the huge spike to the downside during the 8.30 news thinking that this might not get that high and was more interested in shorts so yeah practice trading can help build your confidence can also help you realize if something's not working if you need to adjust something but I highly recommend practice trading and if you've got a funded trader account uh, the one of course I recommend is Apex you know you've got your free market data and you can play around with this stuff anytime you want and you've also got some skin in the game you know whatever it costs you to do the evaluation because just sim trading by itself I mean that's all I had for a while but now that there's all these prop firms I think it's just way more helpful to practice with a prop firm I remember I tried top step when they first came out way back in the day I never actually passed the top step combine I felt their rules were a little too crazy I tried one up trader I got a funded account with them and then I tried Lilu, got a couple funded accounts with them. Lilu is where I heard about Apex. They were actually promoting uh, the Apex investing website and Daryl Martin, the head of Apex, was trading with Lilu. He was getting these huge payouts. And when he started his own funded trader company and uh, started Apex Trader Funding, you know, I felt I felt pretty lucky to get on the ground floor with those guys. They've turned into the, the absolute best prop firm funded trader company that I think they're the best. They got the best rules, the best payouts. They've paid out more money to funded traders than any funded trader company. So I feel very lucky and happy with my decision to be with Apex. But yeah, either way, whatever company you're using whatever indicators whatever strategy or if you just trade price action you know, practice trading during the proper time that you trade normally I think is an incredibly helpful tool so if you're enjoying this content or getting anything out of it like and subscribe because I will be making a lot more thanks for watching